हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर राजेश चोखानी अ जनरल पीडियाट्रिशियन फ्रॉम बैंड्रा मुंबई एंड टुडे वी विल बी रिवाइजिंग अ टॉपिक हाई कलर्ड यूरिंग अ सिंप्लीफाइड अप्रोच सो फ्रेंड्स द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट वी डू इज वी नीड टू क्लैरिफाई विद द पेशेंट व्हाट डू दे मीन बाय हाई कलर कॉमनली इट वुड मीन दैट द कलर ऑफ द यूरिन इज हायर और डार्कर दैन नॉर्मल विच मीन्स डार्क येलो यूरिन so there are three possibilities it could be either concentrated urine or it could be a consumption of a drug or a food color or it could be conjugated jaundice now if there is a corroborating history of volume losses in the form of vomiting or diarrhea or a history of a very poor fluid intake or a very hot environment and the passage of such urine has been only for the last one or two occasions that is temporary then it is concentrated urine when a food color or a drug like a multivitamin preparation imparts a color to the urine this color is maximally seen 2 to 3 hours after the ingestion and then over the next few hours it gradually fades off so if the dark yellow urine is persistent then one might think of it as conjugated jaundice we have already seen in one of our earlier videos the approach to conjugated jaundice it could either be due to hepatic parenchymal disease or biliary tract disease so for the sake of revision let's again go through it that when it is hepatic parenchymal disease the patient is sick especially when it is a acute hepatic disease as against this when the conjugated jaundice is due to a biliary tract disease the patient is relatively comfortable even at comparatively deeper levels of jaundice acute hepatitis is usually due to a hepatotropic viral infection like viral a or viral e where the associated symptoms would be vomiting nausea and anorexia but occasionally acute hepatitis can be secondarily due to a systemic infection like typhoid malaria or infectious mononucleosis and in all of these the patient would be running persistent fever at times acute hepatitis is due to non infectious causes like a metabolic liver disease in wilsons or it could be an immune mediated complication of what was primarily an innocuous infection as seen in hlh we also know that high colored urine or yellow urine when associated with growth failure edema feet ascites and or portal hypertension it signifies a chronic liver disease in infants young infants high colored or yellow urine especially when it is associated with clay colored stools and progressive abdominal distension may signify extra hepatic biliary atresia when such a high colored urine is associated with some degree of growth failure it could well be neonatal hepatitis as well and if the infant demonstrates symptoms like repeated vomiting refusal to feed or poor feeding and failure to thrive along with the high colored urine it could be an inborn error of metabolism in adults high colored urine with ictus and severe right hypochondriac pain would mean gallstones and in some other older adults such high colored urine would be the first manifestation of obstructive jaundice due to a local malignancy and so on and so forth so by taking a detailed history and looking at the associated symptoms we could reasonably figure out almost all the different causes of yellow urine or high colored urine but obviously it follows that there could be other colors seen in the urine now when the urine is extremely dilute 
it may be very faint yellow or almost transparent and what are the other colors that we see patients may complain of red urine so when they complain of red urine we need to ask them what happens when first of all we need to ask them whether it is bright red or brownish or cola color secondly we need to ask them what happens when this urine is kept standing in a container for a while this step is roughly equivalent to centrifugation of the urine in the lab so after this if the sediment looks red but the supernatant is clear then it probably suggests hematuria further if it is painless it is likely to be arising from the upper urinary tract whereas if it is painful it is more likely to be arising from the lower urinary tract glomerular hematuria can sometimes be bright red and painless but more often glomerular hematuria is cola color because of a combination of factors the glomerular hematuria has a prolonged transit time through the nephron and some red blood cells may get lysed and then there is a acidic urine ph so a combination of all these factors may change the hemoglobin to myth hemoglobin which is smoky brown or cola color at times in fact it may almost look blackish another reason for urine appearing black particularly after standing for a while is alkaptonuria so in infants they often complain of the diaper turning black after a while or when the diaper has been washed in soap because of the oxidation of homogentisic acid of course the diagnosis of alkaptonuria is made many years later when there are clinical symptoms like pigmentation of the skin or arthritis so that was about the sediment being red now when the supernatant is red our possibilities are either hemoglobinuria or myoglobinuria or consumption of drugs like hydroxycobalamin or phenytoin or rifampicin where the urine is often orangish red or consumption of food colors or beetroot or senna and the third possibility is acute intermittent porphyria now how do we separate this out we already said a few minutes back that consumption of drugs or foods would lead to the color fading over the next few hours when it comes to acute intermittent porphyria patients may present with red or reddish brown urine described typically as port wine color urine which is associated with multiple or repeated episodes of acute severe abdominal pain where there are no signs to suggest an inflammatory pathology and then finally when you do suspect it as acute intermittent porphyria and you send the urine for examination to the lab we can demonstrate elevated levels of urinary porphobilinogen coming to the supernatant being red but we do a dipstick test on that supernatant and it turns positive this is the situation which suggests hemoglobinuria or myoglobinuria so as a corollary what we understand is that whenever in a urine sample the urine dipstick is positive for blood but there are no rbcs under the microscope this is a situation suggesting hemoglobinuria or myoglobinuria now what is hemoglobinuria normally hemoglobin is present inside the intact red blood cells but here there is free hemoglobin in the urine so this would happen typically when there is intravascular hemolysis so the examples are a patient has consumed an offending drug 
in a situation of G6 PD deficiency or another example is a febrile patient who is probably suffering from falciparum malaria. So again, this kind of a urine can be correlated with the clinical story. Coming to myoglobinuria, again myoglobin is normally present in intact muscle cells but here it is free myoglobin in the urine. This happens when there is rhabdomyolysis as is typically seen in crush injuries. So once again there will be a clinical story to corroborate with a crush injury with this kind of a urine. Finally Sometimes, very rarely, we may see white urine in chyluria or we may see a greenish urine when some drugs like methylene blue or propofol have been administered or rarely there is a pseudomonas urinary tract infection. So friends, we can see that it is reasonably straightforward to analyze the urine color and by a good history and looking at the associated symptoms, we can often pinpoint the cause behind an abnormal urine color. Thank you. The next video will be by Dr. Sridhar Ganpati on voiding dysfunction, a void in our understanding.